Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder, and I've come up to the Leyland headquarters, their factory, their training center. This is where it all happens with Leyland paints in sunny Burstall. I've come up here to see Jamie Taylor, who is the senior applications and... Go on, tell me the rest of it. Says. Senior technical applications and coatings consultant. See, I thought I was going to remember that, but I didn't. That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> it's a hell of a mouthful. on your business yeah. card? It's yeah. actually bigger than my wage packet, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So you're the guy that goes out and looks at complaints if people have complaints and yeah so technical on. complaints on the trade side but even mrs smith in the front room if they've got an issue and it's quite serious we believe it could be our fault it could be a wider issue that needs inspecting so yeah. they send me out it's not your fault is it it's is never it it's never fault? my fault <laughs> no, but is it, is it Leyland's fault? It's hardly ever. Do you know it? what? 99.9% I mean, .9 of the time, it's never the paint fault. It's always yeah. an application error. Yeah. I would have thought so because there's contamination, there's all kinds of wrong products for wrong services yeah. and all that stuff. A misunderstanding of different products yeah. as well, which How we could come on to How easy is your later. job though? When you're, when you're going out to decorators who are sort of, they've been in the trade 30, 40 years and you've got to say to them you've done it wrong. Is that difficult? Uh, it's interesting. Do you have to learn to box? <laughs> not, not yet, but self-defense does come in. Yeah, and yeah. I'm really fast. It is, it is on your toes, <laughs> yeah, you're out the door. But no, it is difficult, isn't it? To yeah, tell people easy. that think they know, you know, and they've never ever read the back of the can, all these instructions. They're not going to do that. They're going to slap it on yeah. and wait till it goes wrong before they're screaming down the phone to you. Exactly. The problem is they do something once and they believe that's the way and they just yeah. carry on and carry on yeah. and carry on. Yeah. And it and might maybe, not be the right way. And maybe they've learned it from somebody who's doing it wrong. And exactly. So it goes on yeah. down the, do you do training courses here? Do you do we do it? the old training course here, yeah, for yeah. new starters and things like that. So, so when people... So, you know, if you're learning the trade, if you come into decorating, yeah. it's through the colleges. Really. Exactly, yeah. Absolutely. All right, so you've got a new product here, which uh, I can see is the hardware. Hardware in mat, yeah. And um, you're going to talk us through it, yeah? Yeah, so hardware in mat, 10 times tougher than your standard vinyl mat. So obviously it's an acrylic polymer in there, which is slightly different to what this is, which is a vinyl based paint. Right, so, so this is the ordinary one. So there's three different coatings on here actually. So we've got a contract mat, yeah. we've got a vinyl mat, and then we've got the hardware in mat. I know it doesn't pick up on oh, camera, but yeah. all, on this board, if you can see the, the lines oh, across it. Yeah, yeah, so if you feel your hand it. across ah, there, got you, got you. you'll also feel the slight difference. That's very soft, quite mm. chalky in, in, in its yeah. feel and appearance. Yeah, now, this is the vinyl mat, slightly harder. Yeah, and this is the tough. Yeah, so what the difference, I mean, you, okay. you will burnish it doing that. <laughs> However. <laughs> Sorry, but that's always my little test. I just go, okay. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Right, the contract mat. It's, Not that hard work. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a sole purpose, and that sole purpose is slightly damp new plaster. Okay. The problem is with this product, it gets widely overused on every single um, substrate you can think of. Um, be it, uh, they just want to tidy up, they're going to use something cheap and nasty. So that big tub that I see when I go into my builder's merchants, yeah. there, that big bargain tub, yeah. what you're saying is that's really for new work as a mist coat or what or just there there we go you've, you've gone straight into it right i'm going to use that for a mist coat because it's it's cheaper hmm. and that's the problem with it as you can feel on that it's it's fairly newly applied so it's quite chalky it comes off you get a deposit on your hands yeah. so if you apply this durable mat over the top it sticks to this chalky underbound surface and doesn't fully adhere it's only stuck to the chalky element of it yeah. so it can delaminate and that's the problem with using something like this and cheapening the system off. A system from Bear would be three coats of this, a mist coat followed by two. A system when it's previously coated would be just two coats. Okay. So, so this product here, yeah. its sole purpose is for slightly damp plaster. It's a breathable formulation. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can get it on fairly quickly after plastering. Yeah. Would you say next day or not? Or is I wouldn't say it? next day. Um, you, you tend to see it going turning slightly in colour, right. and that's so when you can apply the. So when you see that it looks dry, yeah, and it, we know it's not quite dry. Quite dry. At that point, it's changed colour. The, the, the moisture's gone out. Exactly. For all of purposes, put that on. Mist it or not, or just put it on as it is. No, definitely use it as a mist coat first, because what that does, it allows the paint to slightly penetrate into the surface, provides that bond between the two. Otherwise, it can sit on the surface, and again, it can delaminate. Yeah. And okay. often, that's quite a. Uh, the, the other thing, I know I'm digressing. I know, no, it's you fine. Know, because uh, you know this, all this stuff fascinates me. I'm such a sadie that I think. <laughs> 
that um, it does genuinely fascinate me because I go onto sites, I see things done wrong. These guys that polish blaster up, <laughs> over trailing it. Yeah. yeah? That, That's, that really is totally counterproductive, isn't it? Because you can't get the miscoat. No, if you see that, and sometimes it can be difficult to see, but if you do see it, lightly rub the surface down, just mm. a, a light sand of the surface. Just to open it yeah. up again. It's, it's a plasterous trick if you've annoyed him. Um, <laughs> so he, he might go in every single room and polish a little place up, yeah. and the paint skids across that surface and That's doesn't it, I, quite I just penetrate found some it. Mania. Some of them love to do it, really, yeah. really over polish it, and then the Continental guys don't bother, they just leave it absolutely exactly, almost yeah. like a matte finish, don't they? Uh, that's, that's preferable. Yeah, that's the way to go. Okay, so I think I'll probably, you want to get on, I'm talking so, endlessly. We'll go back onto this, contract mat, sole purpose, it was designed around new build houses, so they could get a quick coat of paint on to give it a decorative finish, it allowed the substrate to breathe and dry out. Okay. A vinyl mat that we've got here, it's got a slight bit of vinyl added in there, so it gives it a bit more durability. Every so time you add something... you never use on, on damp surfaces because it's locking it's, it in. It would seal the surface. Yeah, locking it in. And obviously moisture wants to find a way to yeah. get out, it would, would force would that, this off. Would that bubble up if it was used on... Exactly, yeah. Okay, yeah. They do have a slight permeability, but nowhere near to this kind of level. If you stuck this on a damp surface, in a world of trouble, it would start coming right, off. Right, straight away. So absolutely dry. Uh, if it's previously decorated two coats if it's new work absolutely dry but then would you use a mist coat on that mist coat first you can okay. thin it down by 20 percent um, or up to 20 percent yeah, yeah. 10 percent is usually the standard but it can go up to 20 percent yeah. then follow it with two full coats right. that gives you maximum durability and um, washable not just washable scrubbable is it yeah okay. so we've got a bit of a test here um, got a blue pen so a contract mat Vinyl mat, acrylic mat. Now, let's do, just just to make sure it's a kids. kids everyone's pen. sure of what we're doing. Yeah. So that's contract. Contract. Yeah. Or a cheap. Not cheap. But Cheapish. <laughs> Cheapish. What's this one? This is the vinyl. Vinyl mat. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what we're calling hard wearing. Hard wearing. So what we've got here is two vinyl base products yeah. and the newer acrylic, tougher, durable product. So we've got no, virtually zero durability here. We've got a slight bit of wipeability with a vinyl mat and then we've got the extreme durability of a hard wearing mat. Okay. So we've got some uh, general washing up type liquid and water. And what we'll do, now this can fool people this. Yeah, I mean, what is this? It's just a general child's uh, pen. So this is the sort of thing that my grandchildren would be... Exactly, yeah. yeah. Picked up at any kind of store. Yeah. Nice, yeah. They cheap. Usually, they usually write, I hate granddad. Exactly. Now, can you see what's happened on the contract map? Yeah, it's kind of washed it off. Exactly, yeah. a bit of a mess and it hasn't... It's actually penetrated into the substrate. Yeah. It's gone straight through the paint and that shows you the permeability the product. I mean, that, there's a lot of soapy residue on there. No, no, I'm just trying to find the paint. I thought you were thinking it was actually... It, the it might. There you go. Slightly. Yeah. When was this painted? Um, we're probably looking on two weeks ago. Oh, was it? Okay, right. So it should have dried out, yeah. So the vinyl mat. Now we've got a slight bit of wipeability here. So most of this should be removed. Yeah. However, we're struggling. You I mean, probably want that's as bit, much as you should be doing on the vinyl recoat, mat. Wouldn't you, on that? You're going to look, probably look at a stain blocker and uh, then a recoat yeah. because this is going to penetrate through anything that's yeah, water-based. Just, just going through it. Yeah. Now, this is the beauty of the hard wearing mat, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, we can use that. Now, you can instantly see it's, yeah. it's sat on the surface more than any of these other products here. However, it's still yeah. slightly yeah. ingrained into the coating. So what we talk about is not just the wipe ability, but let's change this side round. Right, okay to the scale. Go for something. Yeah. Now you can use the, the things called the magic sponges. They're fantastic on these types of products. However, they are mildly abrasive. Yeah. But it should still be absolutely fine. If we give that a rinse off. <laughs> exactly, yeah. 
it's working. It's working, it's definitely working. Now, if the thing is with a stain, if you do get a stain like that, and it's quite ingrained in there, use some kind of detergent, a stronger detergent. We'd say no stronger than sugar soap, to be honest. Okay, well if you're gonna use nice. any kind of that's pretty household cool. liquid, yeah. um, something not with a bleach. Mm, okay, what, what would the bleach do? It eats away at the coating. Does it? And it eventually degrades it, yeah. Cheaper than paint remover. <laughs> Who knew? I didn't know that. Well, that's, well, that's sure, an interesting I'm problem. Sure there's lots of people scrubbing walls with bleach, aren't they? Especially when they get mould. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, that's advised, but if you get mould like that, you are generally looking at re-coating because the staining can be particularly bad with that. Yeah, yeah. If we have a look at that now, it's... Uh, well, it's gone. It's not there anymore. Very nice. Hard wearing, meaning? Extremely hard wearing, actually meaning it's durability to be regularly re-cleaned. So, whereas with this one, it's wipeable, you can wipe it down. With this one, you can regularly re-clean. Yeah. This one, you're looking at a redecoration. If something so, like this happens, this one, you're just looking at cleaning it down. Got, if you've got kids in the house, exactly. you've got serial offenders with your yeah. colored pens, you've got two choices. You either take the pens away, <laughs> and limit their education, let's be fair. <laughs> or you get yourself some hard work, hard work scrubbable. Scrubbable mat, yeah. yeah. And get the kids to scrub it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of people are used to these traditional based emulsions. Okay. So they often get quite a shock when it comes to acrylics and modern emulsions. The odor's different, the way they apply is slightly different. So instantly you'll know, notice a stronger odor that can kind of linger in the atmosphere. They don't dry as fast as vinyl based emulsions um, and how you apply them. So when you're applying the paint, it's actually roll and keep rolling and keep rolling. Don't go back to what you've just done oh, because really? they lift off. Oh, okay. If you go back to it, it'll start peeling off on itself. I've had that. So if you've got any kind of defect, just leave it until it's fully dry. I've never uh, known why that was. Yeah, they like to... I'm running loads today. <laughs> Acrylics like to attach themselves to themselves or adhere to themselves mm. far better than any other substrate. So it's in it a semi-wet state, yeah. Yeah, so it'll go back to its... its yeah, so there's two ways you can do it. Keep to uh, a minimum the size you're working, so one wall at a time. Sure, yeah. Um, a lot of people like to cut in the whole room and then roll. What you'll find, it'll start pulling off on where certain areas where you've cut in. God. Don't do that. One wall at a time or small areas at a time. So that's why you end up getting all these calls from people because they've misunderstood Exactly that. that. Where does it give you that information? Does it give you that information anywhere or is that a bit of a trade secret? It's more of a trade secret. I, I mean, trade paints, aren't they? So they are. It says it there, so. But the thing is with modern emulsions, uh, the jobbing decorator will know day in, day out, he's getting used to these products all the time. And sometimes he'll have more knowledge than us because, yeah. simply because he's working with it every day and they pick up these tips and tricks. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. Another point is, um, if you're going over across something that's highly absorbent, so we kind of touched on this earlier, if you use that as a mist coat, yeah. and then you want to use two coats of this, that's highly absorbent. In fact, when you first apply that, it's very, very chalky, but it's almost as absorbent as a freshly plastered wall. So you're getting that quench, the absorbency of the paint, the evaporation of the moisture from this paint, so it's a two-way pull and it's working against you and you will really struggle to get a quality finish under something like that. And then the, the correct way to do it would be actually to thin this one down. Yeah. Right, so if you've got a choice, if it's previously painted, yeah. you've got to go with two coats of this. Yeah. yeah. If it's fresh plaster, go with a mist coat of this and, and two yeah. coats. But if if you were going on to that and you didn't know what had been used, you would, yeah. would you miscoat this one onto that? Or not? I wouldn't actually miscoat, um, but I would thin the first coat down. Mm. Um, and there's an allowance not, for... Not, not, when you say mist is 10%. Yeah. Thinning is what, 5% or... Lean? Yeah, up to 10%. There's always an allowance for around 10% in okay. these products. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's, you know, a lot to take in. I, I, I'm actually quite surprised because you know, I've been painting for a few years. I thought, well, yeah. what's he going to tell me about painting? I've learned loads and loads here. That's really valuable advice. And hopefully it's valuable to you. And if you want to know any more, 
I'm going to give them your phone number, your mobile number. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> if, you know, if you want to know any more, they do have a technical help line, do you? We do have a technical help line, yeah. Or you can, uh, can, you, can they contact you on yeah. the internet? Email, through the internet, social media. All uh, the usual things. All the usual but, uh, It's not the paint's fault. Basically, the first thing you've got to do, read the instructions and uh, know what you're dealing with. We always say... All the, every bit of information you require is on the back of the tin. Is it? If you go away from that, we, how can we help you? Yeah. Okay, good advice. And I'm going to be looking at more Leyland products while I'm up here because it's a long way to drive just to look at one tin of paint. So we're going to have a look around and see if we can find some more gems to uncover in the painting and decorating world. So don't forget to subscribe. We'll be back with more of these kind of videos very soon.